Election season underway already. Uh, midterm elections coming up in November, and voters are set to head to the polls in Ohio and Indiana next week for primaries as they get underway for the midterm elections there. The races are a key test of former President Trump's influence over the Republican Party as it aims to take back control of the House and Senate and voters' judgment on President Biden. In Ohio, it's a key test of whether the Republican Party has a firm hold on that state, which has been won by Republicans pretty consistently recently. Joining us now, a Democratic candidate hoping to turn Ohio District 7, the 7th Congressional District of Ohio, outside of Cleveland there, from red to blue in the next election, Democrat Matt Deemer. Thanks very much for being with us. How you doing, Terry? Thanks for having me. Okay. So, first, what's the top issue for voters in your congressional district uh, outside of Cleveland there? Well, I think there's a couple of top issues, um, and I think that we have to look at a couple of things. Is what the pandemic showed us uh, a couple of things that are happening internationally, global geopolitical, that we need to do as a country, as a nation, for national security and for uh, our, our economy. And so we're talking, you know, manufacturing, uh, seizing these opportunities, onshoring our supply chain, uh, making sure we're promoting small businesses and giving people great jobs to, uh, you know, provide for their families and for the future. But I think the, another another thing that is very on top of uh, people, at least in Ohio Seven's mind is unification and making sure that we're talking across the aisle, making sure that we are bringing everybody of, of all ideologies to the table to continue to have conversations, to find solutions that work for everyone to move Ohio 7 forward. I, I think people across the country are eager for that, unless they're on Twitter uh, or Facebook. But <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me ask you, we're going to take a look at a map here just to give people a sense of your district. We're talking about suburban areas <laughs> west and south of Cleveland. Under the old congressional map, I guess it was represented by a Republican incumbent, Congressman Bob Gibbs. He's not running. So after redistricting, looks like the district will include some more Democratic-leaning parts, Cuyahoga County there. Uh, why do you see this district being an opportunity for a Democratic candidate like yourself? Well, look, I, I think that uh, we're looking at different demographics here. Uh, obviously, it's still a red-leaning district, Republican-leaning district. But I, I really think that, you know, when you get people in front of, uh, you know, the, the voters of Ohio 7th, and you're talking about solutions, talking about our economy, talking about putting money into the pockets, bringing back companies and manufacturing, things that Ohio has always had. You know, we're builders here. We've built everything from cars to, you know, making tires to even uh, frozen dinners over here. And so we want to get back to that and, and go back to, like, our 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 roots, our foundation of building. Um, and once you start talking to the members, uh, the voters of Ohio 7, with that in a unifying and bringing all these solutions to the table and all these ideologies uh, to create the solutions, I think that uh, that's going to resonate with Ohio 7. And that's why I think that it's an opportunity. And look, I am running as a representative. I'm running to represent the people of Ohio 7, not just one side of the aisle. I'm here to represent all of the people in Ohio 7. So it, I think that once we have uh, that conversation with myself and the people of this district, I think that they're going to cho choose me to go to Washington to represent them. Well, our political team has kind of talked to people, voters across Ohio, and, and they found, their, their reporting anyway, shows that, that immigration is at the top of mind uh, for a lot of voters. What, what, do you, what do you think about that? Ohio's not a border state, long, long way away from the border. Uh, the, the border is broken. There's no question about that. There's real concern there's going to be massive surge of people. Uh, what do you think about the judge's decision this week to temporarily keep Title 42, that public health measure that uh, President Trump put in place during the pandemic uh, that allowed border agents to expel asylum, asylum seekers as a COVID precaution? Uh, how do you read that issue for your voters? I read that as jobs. I, I read that as, as actual fears of, you know, really good paying, livable jobs that provide pensions and futures and, and generational generational uh, security for your kids, your grandkids, and your communities. Um, and so I'm looking at this as, you know what, even if it's not an issue here, there people are looking at, uh, where's where's the where's the job that my my father my grandfather had that they went to for 30 years and then retired with a great pension and health care and then my my kids or their kids would go to work at these factories or these great jobs uh, and and they're looking at this as like we, we need to figure out our economic opportunities and so I think that's why I'm I'm really focusing on on manufacturing and our supply chain and the discussions across the aisle because I think that's what people are looking at in Ohio Seven and across the nation is where are these uh, I guess 
these jobs that that we see in other places. We see the manufacturing, we see the supply chain in China and their middle class uh, exploding and ballooning, uh, but ours is shrinking and uh, that's what we need to work on. And I think that we just have to work on ourselves as a country and our economies and uh, really look at the families of, of our Ohio 7 and the nation and put that first. That's a great point, people's understanding what a middle class life uh, entailed was, you know, maybe a cottage up north, a boat in the water, that, that kind of thing. All that is, is gone with the disappearance of a lot of those manufacturing jobs. So, Matt Deemer, thank you very much for that. Good luck to you. And we'll check in thank you, sir. as the race goes on. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.